So now people come to our work to help others. People come to this work because they're not so interested in the material things, although if it got them here, and they learn the formula, and they learn how to create. And once you get that, now the game's over. Now you want to make a difference. You want to leave a legacy. You want to contribute. You want to help somebody. And we bring children in at the end of the event, and we heal them of really serious health conditions. And we have really profound and prestigious universities in the United States saying, what in the heck are you guys doing? Like, we want to come and study this because it's so phenomenological. Now you're being a part of something great. So yeah, it may be the sports car, it may be the new relationship, it may be healing your body, but then when that happens, now what? What are you gonna do now? Exactly. I mean, what are you gonna do when you have everything? What are you gonna do now? You're, you're, the next thing is, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna make a difference? We're wired to care for one another, to be kind to one another, to heal one another, to shine for one another, so to show other people they can shine. That's what the living organism does when they're not in fear. They're not in aggression and hatred and prejudice and all those things that create division. So, so when that person runs into that experience of the divine and their brain goes into an aroused state of gamma, they're getting a biological upgrade. I can guarantee you that some health condition will be eliminated because they just ran into wholeness and their body will become more whole. So they could do all the diets, all the chemotherapy, all the nutrition, everything, and they're handling that health condition matter to matter. And when you change that, anything in your life matter to matter, there's a long space between cause and effect, between it's thought dense. and experience. It's some, sometimes so long you forget what your dream was. Mm -hmm. But when you run into it and you produce an immediate effect, now you're doing it in no time. It's happening in the moment. And if you can capture that, and you see the brain go into these elevated states of coherent gamma patterns, 200, 300, 400, 500 standard deviations outside of normal. That person can't make their brain do that. That's a subjective experience that we're capturing objectively. And we say to that person, what was that? And it's inevitable. They don't, they don't have the words to describe what a mango tastes like. They don't have the words to describe what the divine is. You gotta just experience it. So then, that person that stands on the stage that has Parkinson's disease or had Parkinson's disease that's a 76-year-old female that can't blow, couldn't blow her nose, couldn't swallow, couldn't chew her food, couldn't stand up. One moment running into the divine and next thing you know she's on the stage telling her story. And she's not young and she's not buffed and she doesn't look like a vegan and she's not dressed like everybody that cares about that. She's just, you would walk right past her. But when she's talking and I'm looking out in the audience, I'm looking at 1,500 people leaning in. Nobody has got their eyes off of her because she's the example of truth. And that's the four minute mile. Puncture right through there. That's a, that's a piercing through a layer of consciousness. And that leaves a footprint in consciousness. And there's someone in the audience with Parkinson's disease looking at her going, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And here comes the four minute mile. As soon as it's broken, the next person does it. So by the end of the event, there's so much love in the room. There's so much energy in the room because people feel so incredible that they're, 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 not, they're not attached to their past any longer. They're, they're so connected to their, they're, they're so connected to their future that they stop telling the story of their past. They're telling the story of their future. They're no longer believing in their past. They're believing in their future. They're no longer romancing their past, they're in a romance with their future. And if oxytocin levels are up and it's the chemical that bonds, and then you're gonna believe in that future you're creating with all of your heart, it better be opened and activated and we're gonna measure it. And I'm gonna tell you, you're doing it or you're not. And so then people start realizing it was never about that. It was about who they became, that we overcome that we overcome, that we overcome that week. We overcome, we overcome. I give people numerous opportunities to get beyond themselves, numerous opportunities to connect with themselves. I want them to get frustrated. I want them to get impatient. I want them to get overly analytical because that's the end of their belief. And then finally, when they finally make up their mind to let go and just do it, and they run into that feeling, they run into that experience, they're all in. It's, they, you think they, you think they, they don't want a sports car anymore they don't want they want that whatever that was and if it comes with a transcendental moment 
When they come back to their senses from that inner experience, their spectrum of reality is broadened. They're seeing things they had never seen before because their brain wasn't wired to see it, but it didn't come from the environment, it came from their inner environment. That transcendental moment now is producing a feeling, a frequency that is so unusual, it's so much joy, so much bliss, so much ecstasy. I've watched people have to stop it because it's way bigger than them. Now, I would consider that a good problem to have. <laughs> you measure that person's immune system, you measure the changes in their heart rate variability, not a little amplitude, huge amplitudes. That person is feeling a lot of love. And imagine it's a man. Imagine a man whose heart is open that wide. They, they sob with, with the freedom to be able to not care what they look like. or trying to fit into some paradigm or mold. So then a new consciousness in that footprint is emerging and we have scientific evidence I can tell you can make your brain work better in a week. You can make your heart more coherent. You can change the field around your body. You can strengthen your immune system. You can change your gene expression. You can lengthen your life. You can create so many oxidative changes in your cells. We have great research to prove that. That's the truth of who you are. That's the truth, that miracle within you. That evidence is the backbone that gives people permission to try it out. It's the language. Then you see someone standing on the stage telling their story in testimony, whether it's stage four cancer, whether it's MS, whether it's blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. You can't go back to being the same person after that. Evidence is the loudest voice. And so then when we begin to make those inroads and the footprint exists in consciousness and you're witnessing it in three-dimensional reality, the, the, the illusion of limitation begins to change and now all you want to do is you crave the unknown so people in our work don't get up in the morning and go oh god i gotta do my meditation today <laughs> no they're not doing that they're, they their body is waking them up saying get out of bed because they don't want the magic to end and when you start seeing the gap between cause and effect thought and experience closing down you're moving closer to the divine and when that happens all the things you thought you want you no longer want because the overcoming process leading to who you become nobody can take that away from you so we practice it in in our seated meditations we practice it standing and walking you better walk as it and you better be able to embody it and practice doing it with your eyes open so when you return back to your life, when you walk from your house to your car, you're, work, you're walking in the energy of your future. And if you keep doing that, that's going to become a habit.